What's up guys, Adam Frader here, gonna show you how to start your calisthenics journey right at home with no equipment. Now whether you're a complete beginner to fitness or calisthenics, or you're an athlete but you've never dove into calisthenics before, these skills are gonna apply to you. Now most people tell you don't skip the foundation, you can't skip steps, you've heard it a million times, but let me explain why it's important. If you skip steps, you can still learn things. Now most people do this in calisthenics because they want to learn a handstand right away. They want to learn a muscle up. They skip the beginning steps of building that foundational strength. They learn these skills, but then they can't progress. They hit a plateau after plateau after plateau because they don't have that foundational strength. And I'll dive more into detail later, but what we're going to do with this video is show you how to build that foundation so you can learn any calisthenics skill there is and continue to progress in the sport. Let's dive right in. Okay, so the first principle I want to explain is controlling your movement. And that means being able to pick up the speed, the tempo of a movement at any point in the range of a movement. Now, a lot of people think they can do more reps that they can do. So let's take pushing, for example. Here's a push-up. I often see people doing this, right? Now, this kind of looks like a normal push-up, but they're really only going to here. Now, if you look at my shoulder blades, my shoulder blades are pulled back. My shoulder blades are retracted the whole time I'm doing that push-up. That's because I'm cheating and I'm not using that foundational strength that I talked about to take my shoulder blades and protract them at the top of a push-up. So most people have them retracted, their shoulder blades are kissing, they go like this because they don't have this strength right here. Now calisthenics is so reliant on strength in the shoulder. Your scapula is really your shoulder blade. And that's what's gonna protract, retract your shoulder, move your arm this way, that way. So building up good awareness and movement in your scapula is key, but also building up strength. So take someone who can do, again, 20 reps of push-ups, but they never do this. Not to say you should always do this in a push-up if you're targeting your chest, but you need to build up that strength. So see what it's like. I don't know if you can do five push-ups, if you can do 10 push-ups, if you can do 20 push-ups. I like to challenge my friends who can do 20 push-ups to doing just 20 scapula push-ups because at about, I don't know, after 10 to 15, they start to get tired and not really be able to push up through their scapula. But yet they swear they can do 20 push-ups. Well, think about if they practice just the scapula part how much stronger their push-up would be. They'd probably be able to do 40 push-ups because they wouldn't be getting weaker and weaker and weaker in the shoulders. So first part, control. Learning to control the movement from all the way up here, coming down, strong shoulders. I'm all the way down, I have the strength to here and I don't push just my body up because I don't have the strength. I'm pushing at, in a flat line. My whole body, utilizing my core. If you're not utilizing your core, again, you're breaking the chain of your body and you're cheating the movement. Here's a push-up without my core. This is just arms. I see a lot of this too. I see a lot of this. Don't cheat for the sake of reps. No one's counting but you. Honestly, that's the biggest thing. No one is counting but you. Do one good rep. The better you get at slowly controlling a movement, the stronger you'll be way down the line, not even way down the line, right away at doing reps after reps. So if it takes putting your knees on the floor, put your knees on the floor, but try to control it slowly. You don't need to do a million like this. Just work on controlling, getting to the top, pushing through that scapula, keeping that core tight so your stomach's not drooping, and controlling the full range of the movement. All right, next piece of business is core strength. Now, when talking about the core, you have both your anterior core, which is the front line of your body, and your posterior core, which goes from your hamstrings to your glutes and up the spine muscles in your back. Now, it's important to know that both of them are different. Obviously, people want six packs, they want their anterior core, but there's also really, really crucial core muscles on the other side that add stability to your back, to your hips, to your spine, and that's gonna be really crucial in calisthenics. So to test out yours, lay on the floor like this, and you'll notice that naturally your back has some curvature, some space under it. So if we engage the core and we push that lumbar, your lumbar is your lower back, we push that lumbar in, 
We do that by tucking the ribs, you can engage your diaphragm, push that lumbar down, and now that core's tucked. Now if you're familiar with yoga, this is the beginning to boat pose, which you would hold like this. And this, regardless of yoga, if you can really just hold your lumbar on the ground, you can do this with bent knees. However, this exercise is gonna help you hold straight form when you wanna do a handstand, when you wanna do push-ups, when you wanna have more strength and pull-ups. Because what this is building is more than just your abs. This is building a chain of strength across your full body. My glutes are engaged right now. My hamstrings are engaged. I can feel the spinae muscles in my back engaged. I can feel my anterior core engaged. And all of that is gonna be really important to adding stability. And that's what core does. Core adds stability to your body. That's why all calisthenics athletes are shredded is because with every calisthenics exercise, push-ups, pull-ups, they're not like weightlifting where you're just targeting a single muscle. Your entire body has to fire to add stability to your frame while performing those exercises. So that takes care of stability and core strength. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so I talk a lot about range of motion and how it's really important to build strength through the full range. But that being said, a great way to progress is to do progressive movements or parts of a whole. So for instance, a pistol squat, right? If you don't have the strength to keep proper form, you're not gonna get the benefits of doing a pistol squat. Sure, you might be able to do it like this, and for as far as you think it looks cool on social media and pictures, and I'm not saying that that's your motivation, but let's remove that. Everybody preaches that good form is important. And the truth is the only reason it's important is because if you actually want to target the right muscles, not throw off your biomechanics or risk injury, then it's really important to make sure that in a pistol, for example, your knee's in perfect line, it's not caving in, because that would put a, a, a lot of pressure on your meniscus or some of the tendons in your knees that wouldn't, that wouldn't target the quad the right way. So anyway, all of this being said, you can do partials of everything. So. If I can't do a full pistol because I don't have the strength to control it slowly through the range, I can do this. Just negatives where I let myself down as low as I can and then I put my other leg down. And I can use a wall too. I let myself down. This is called doing a negative. I'm just doing the bottom part of the exercise. You can also just do positives. You can hold this, lean forward, use your hands, give you some support, and then just stand up. Let yourself down. Just stand up. Now by doing this and breaking the movement, the reason it's easier is because what becomes difficult, and I'm using a pistol for example, but this applies to any exercise. What becomes difficult is not just going one way, controlling it of course, but also controlling it until you have to change directions. You have to stop, engage, and change directions. That's where a lot of the strength comes in. So rather than focusing on that, do parts of a whole, little pieces of exercises, and this can be done in pull-ups. You can do with pull-ups, you can do, um, sometimes I just do half up pull-ups, sometimes I just do scapulas, um, and sometimes I just do pull-up compressions or chin-ups, whatever it is. And you can do this again with push-ups. Sometimes you can stay down here, sometimes you can stay up here, and again with handstands, lots of different ways to do negatives. One of the ways that I learned how to do handstand push-ups, doing a handstand, letting myself down slowly in a negative, jumping back in the handstand, letting myself down slow. So with that concept in mind, add that to your training, start breaking things up so you can build strength, then add those pieces back together so you have strength through the full movement. So I know this video is no equipment, I wouldn't deem two chairs as equipment, but I'm just gonna add in this bonus clip because I showed you how to target the scapula and build that full range um, with push-ups. I wanna show you an option with pull-ups if you don't have a pull-up bar. Obviously you need to have a specific type of chair that's pretty sturdy. These are all right if I grab them in the right position. I'm gonna hold myself flat and I'm not gonna do a pull up. I'm not actually gonna bend my elbows. I'm just gonna pull with my scapula. So first, I'm gonna protract, meaning retraction is here. Protract, I'm just gonna push my shoulders so I'm here, I'm completely relaxed in my shoulders, lift my hips, and then just, without bending my elbows, I'm just using my scapula. You can bend your knees to make it easier. Straighten your legs. Now this looks so simple, probably looks dumb, but as I explained where people can do push-ups but don't have that finishing strength to push their shoulders away, people can do pull-ups all day. I see people cheat pull-ups, but they never go to a full hang. Now why do people cheat and not go to a full hang? 
it's yeah, yes, it's because they want to do more reps, but it's also because they just don't have the strength. The hardest part of the pull-up is from here to here. Next, Mr. Motorcycle, I'm in the middle of a video. Anyway, the hardest part of a pull-up is from complete dead hang to engaging that scapula and then the first part of the biceps and the lats. So if you can just build this part, you're gonna be on your way to doing lots and lots of pull-ups. All right, so that wraps up the video. That's my beginner lesson for calisthenics. Hopefully you got a lot out of this. You could have learned things to prevent injury, to help you progress for the long term. In my next video, I'll be sharing you specific exercises that you can do at home without equipment so you can get stronger. And I'll explain how to build that into some sort of training program for yourself. Like, subscribe, share, do all that beautiful YouTube stuff. I'm relatively new to the YouTube game, um, but your comments can help me make better videos. I got a ton of knowledge, I got a ton of experience, and I just gotta figure out how to package it for you guys on YouTube. So any advice helps. Thanks, and I hope you got a lot out of it. I'll see you on the next one.